This is a Grace Watchman. So I was watching a video by Ray Comfort here. You can see right here, Living Waters YouTube channel, Ray Comfort. And I noticed, now I already knew this about Ray Comfort, that he didn't believe on eternal security and all that. But I wanted to just show you how, how damning it can be to someone who might even be newly saved or might be on the verge of getting saved um i just wanted to show you so here's a video i have at two minutes before this he's just going through his whole spiel like he normally does you know um have you sinned you know have you lied have you committed adultery um you know that kind of stuff have you stolen anything and then he says oh well you're you're guilty of god's um verdict you're guilty of sin so you deserve hell and he goes through all that, like, you know, he normally does. Most people are familiar with Ray Comfort. Now, before I start, I'm not saying anything is wrong. Or, I should back up. I'm not saying that Ray Comfort doesn't have good works. Alright, he, he clearly has good works. He clearly helps, you know, thousands of people get saved or have, however many. Um, you know, his videos... And his documentaries are a great blessing unto the world, um, especially when it comes to his atheist ones. But when it comes to this doctrine Ray Comfort is preaching right now, it's damning, and it it is it is deadly. It's a deadly doctrine, and it is a false doctrine, and it disparages the gospel of Jesus Christ. So now that I got that out of the way, I know that he has good works. I'm focusing right now on his doctrine and his false preaching, okay? So I'm going to play this video, um, and then I'll stop it and talk about it. Blasphemy, but God is holy and is extremely serious. It demands the death sentence for sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. You've got to face a holy God. And also says in there too that once you accept it and come to uh, forgiven forever, right? Like you can't lose that. Say that again? You're forgiven forever, right? You can't lose that. Anyone who could could miss it, come forth. Yes, Jesus is saved. You're saved forever. Like you can't change that up, correct? No. Okay. I'm good. I no, didn't say that. I didn't say you can't lose it. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. You can't lose it. Jesus says that. No, no. That's what I was specifically taught before. Is you, as much as you come forward, you say, "Jesus saved me." You can't change that up, correct? No. He followed Jesus for three years. Okay. He was a thief. He stole from the bank. So I want to point out that he brought up the fact that Judas betrayed him. Betrayed Jesus. And because of that, that means eternal security isn't true. And it's, it's completely just nonsense. Obviously, Judas was never saved. He never received the gift of the Holy Spirit. He was a false convert. That's clear. You don't see himself not in the same place. Yes, because you're by your own heart forever. Nothing he can do to lose it. You no, can't be like, I it's not true. and now I'm out. Once Jesus forgives you, you're forgiven forever. Because he can see, he, supposedly, he's beyond time, right? So he sees into your heart. He sees beyond the moment you have, the moment you have. And so he knows, okay, you forgive me. You're forgiven forever. He knows all the stuff that you're going to do. So if you fall away from the church later on, he already knew that. You were already forgiven for those things that you're coming up with. Why you guys are on logic? So if you come forward and you've accepted and you've done so, even if you fall off later, you're still forgiven because he can't see. It's not a matter of, oh, he only sees your heart up to this point. It's beyond time. He sees your heart for the whole life. So if I come forward and say, yes, I have, tr I have trusted Jesus, and now 10 years later, what did you I've stopped going to church. He already sees that. He already knows that. You're not losing. Do you know what a straw man is? Uh, from... It's, it's to do with debating. It's when you put up an argument with yourself and then rip it down and say, I'm intelligent. That's what you've just done. You won't hear me out. As, as neither, neither will you. Let me explain to you. We both have our point and neither of us have seen on that. Are you familiar with the parable of the sower? The what? The parable of the sower that Jesus gave. Okay. He said a man 
car seat, some fell on the wayside and withered and died, some fell on shallow soil, it grew up, and when the sun came out it withered and died. Some fell among thorns and it choked, and some fell on good soil. There are multitudes of people who are false converts, deceived and fell on good soil. Judas was one of them. And then right there, he just said, if you didn't notice, there is mo there is a lot of false converts. Judas was one of them. So then he uses, oh, Judas, you know, he was saved, and then he betrayed Jesus, and then he lost his salvation. And then he's like, well, Judas was a false convert. Which which is it? You know, which is it? There are multitudes within the church. The Bible calls us ears among the wheat, goats among the sheep. People who profess godliness, but they don't have the things that accompany salvation. So, don't take assurance of your salvation if there's not fruit. There must be fruit as evidence that you're passed from death to life. And so you can have assurance that if you give your heart to Jesus, you check the box, you're saved for eternity. Because Jesus said on the day of judgment, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, will say, depart from me, you worker of lawlessness, I never knew you. You can't call yourself a Christian and give yourself a pornography lying and stealing and blasphemy. If you're a Christian, you'll be genuine, and God knows that. And on the day of judgment, he's going to separate the truth from the false. So if you've been taught wrong, doctor, I'm sorry. Go back to Scripture and read what the Bible says, and examine my motive. I'm earnest because I care about you. I don't want to win an argument. I want to see you saved on the day of judgment. So think about your sins. Think about what Jesus did on the cross, and then come to a place of sorrow for your sin and repentance. And the Bible says he's able to save to the uttermost those that come to God by Him. But be genuine because you don't fool anyone if you're a hypocrite. Does that make sense? No, I'll just stop it there. So, if you didn't catch that, Ray Comfort is pretty much teaching that you need to be perfect, that you need to get all the sin out of your life, pretty much Lordship Salvation. You need to get all the sin out of your life, you need to just get rid of it all and then and only then are you saved which is false which is false recomfort is teaching from a position of pride and of self-righteousness right and what does the bible say about that for grace are you saved by faith and it is not of yourselves it is a gift of god not of works lest any man should boast All right. If we aren't saved by faith and we aren't saved by grace, that would means we have to work for it, that we have to become perfect in our life. And then once the sin is completely removed from our life, then are, and only then are we saved. That's what Ray Comfort is preaching. He's preaching a works-based salvation. And he's boasting, I'm perfect, I don't sin, I've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You need to repent. You need to live a sinful, sinless life. You need to understand what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you. Why are you sinning? Jesus died for you. Jesus died for those sins. Works. Works-based salvation. A man like this. He, he understands the gospel. He understands it. He has it in his heart. This man might not even be saved. Granted, he might be a new Christian. He might be newly be saved. But I believe that there's a great possibility this man is saved. And Ray Comfort's coming in. And he is leading him in the wrong direction. As he says that this guy is doing. False minister of Satan. No man can take away your salvation. No work can sa take away your salvation. For it is a gift of God. It is a gift of God. When God, someone gives you a gift, what do you have to do? You have to open it, right? So God gave the gift to everybody. But you have to open the gift, right? You have to receive it. If I give you a gift of a plane ticket, right? In order to get that gift, you have to go to the airport and, you know, receive the gift. You have to use the plane ticket that I gave you as a gift, right? 
Same thing with God's salvation. You have to accept it. Accept Jesus into your life. Alright. So with the plane ticket, if you already use the plane ticket, and you already use the gift, how can I take it away? Hey man, you know, give me that gift back, that plane ticket. I don't, I don't want you to have it anymore because, you know, we fought and you, we, our relationship is spoiled now, and you did something wrong against me. So give me back the gift. And then you reply, Hey man, I already used the gift. Like, I already flew the plane ticket, I had a great vacation, you know, I thank you for it. No, 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 man. I... Our relationship is spoiled. Give me the gift back. Hey, I already used the gift. I can't give it back. That's with God's salvation. He gives you salvation. Look up the word, what salvation means. He gave you salvation. You can't take it back. And then you might say, well, God is all-powerful. He can surely take it back because he's God. First of all, God wouldn't give you the gift. He wouldn't receive the gift. I'm not getting Calvinistic here because I'm not a Calvinist. You wouldn't receive the gift if God didn't know you were going... to stay on the path. The Holy Spirit enters you. I'm, I'm, I don't need to show verses on that. I'm sure everybody will believe that the Holy Spirit resides on a Christian, right? And we all know that God kicked out Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden because sin was there and God cannot be around sin. So when the Holy Spirit enters you, do you think the Holy Spirit's going to enter a, a sinful soul a soul that desires for sin no of course not god is going to enter the believer that is born again right right god is going to enter the believer with his holy spirit of someone who is born again which means that their soul has rejected sin and loves God, right? Let me show you a few more verses. Right here. All that the Father giveth shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So if you come to Jesus and you end up sinning, he's not going to cast you out. He's not going to, oh, you lost your salvation. You you told a lie. No, that's not how it works. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So what is that saying? It's saying when you get saved, you're in the hand of God. God closes his fist on you just so much to not crush, crush you but at times he chastises you and crushes you a little bit you're in his, the palm of his hand no one is going to convince you is going to lead you to sin is enough to that god is just gonna let go god's grip is powerful probably the most powerful grip ever out of anything right Nothing can pluck you out of his hand once you are there. It says it very plainly. And then, of course, there's a famous verse. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believeth on him, not doeth good works in his name, not become sinless, you know, Whoever believeth. The standard is believing on Jesus Christ. And there's so many verses. That. That talk about that. 2 Corinthians one two two, Who hath sealed us. And given. The earnest of the spirit in our hearts. You are. Sealed in Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ seals you. 
and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. A man like this, as I said, he, Ray Comfort is confusing this man and possibly leading him to hell. If this man is indeed saved, now he's all confused in doctrine. And if he's not saved, this might be the thing that pushes him over the edge to just say, forget about this. This is too complicated. I have to get rid of all my sins in my heart and I don't have a helper. See, the Holy Spirit's a helper. The name of the Holy Spirit in the Bible is the Helper. And I don't want to get into a whole study about this, so I'm not going to show you the verse. You can go look it up. BlueLetterBible.com Just type in Helper, KJV. The Holy Spirit is nicknamed the Helper, right? So, because of that, that means that when the Holy Spirit enters your house, He helps you out to get the sin out of your life. The spirit versus the flesh, right? And, right? The spirit versus the flesh. So the spirit helps you overcome your flesh. It's a battle. You will never become sinless on heaven. If you were to become sinless when you get saved, I mean on earth, but if you become sinless when you get saved, why doesn't God just rapture you up then? I mean, just skip all the process of sanctification of the Holy Spirit. Just rapture you up right now when you get saved. Go to heaven because you're already sinless, right? Right? And then you can make the argument that, well, God wants you here to save souls. All right. Fair enough. But this is a damnable heresy. No one can become sinless in the flesh. And especially especially without the help of the Holy Spirit. I mean, and I'll say this. You know who else doesn't believe in eternal security? Catholics. You know who else doesn't believe in eternal security? Muslims. You know who else doesn't believe in eternal security? Jehovah's Witnesses. You want to be like them? You want to be like the world? You want to be like the Christians? The, I'll say... The Baptist, Independent Baptists, and maybe a few other groups that are in there. I'm not preaching that Baptist is the only way to go, but for the most part, the only people who believe on eternal security are the fundamental, King James only, Christian Bible believers. The only people in the entire world that believe that when you believe something, that when you give your faith to something, you are saved that you have eternal security we are the only people that believe that catholics don't believe that orthodox don't believe that muslims don't believe that Bap uh, buddhists don't believe that hindus don't believe that jehovah's witnesses don't believe that mormons don't believe that amish don't believe that although i'm not too sure about the amish but we are the only people that believe that it is unique to us. That's what sets Christianity apart. Is that we have assurance of our salvation. As the old hymn says. Blessed assurance. People wrote these hymns for a reason. They wrote it because that's what they felt. They felt that through the Holy Spirit. And there's a reason why these hymns have stuck around for so long. And there's a reason why in modern churches, they're trying to get rid of the traditional worship and the traditional hymns. And replace it with all the contemporary music of the Christian rock or whatever else. There's a reason for that. Teaching this doctrine is just going to keep people away from Jesus. I have to... Well... I guess I have to get rid of all my sins, so before I accept Jesus Christ, I guess I'll go get rid of my pornography addiction, I'll go get rid of my lying, um, my bitterness, you know, before I come to Jesus Christ, I guess I gotta do all that, so hopefully I don't get hit by a bus by then, and um, hopefully I can get that those sins figured out pretty quickly, because I want to get saved. 
See what it does to people? And it lives you in a whole life of fear. Oh, I accepted Jesus and Christ in my heart. The Holy Spirit entered me. And then, you, and then you tell a lie. Tell a little white lie. Oh, the Holy Spirit leaves you, and then you go get hit by a car. And then what? Oh, you're in hell because you unrepented of your sin, and then you got hit by a bus at the very last second. And now you're not saved, and you go to hell. Really? Because you have to be perfect, right? Right, Recomfort? You have to be perfect in your sins, right? Soften your hearts to the Lord. Don't live a life in fear. Jesus Christ took the fear from us. He took the fear of death from us. And this Lord's salvation thing, this not believing in eternal security thing, that's that's fear. This man might very well be saved. Because I'll tell you that he understands the gospel message better than Ray Comfort does. This, this all-holy... I saved thousands of souls, Ray Comfort. This man understands the gospel more. And now at this point, that Ray Comfort confused him. Maybe he doesn't, but he did. And I pray that God gives him the knowledge and the, the conviction of it. That's all I have. Soften your hearts to the Lord. Read his holy word. For English speakers, that is the King James Bible. And God bless each and every one of you. And I pray that you receive his gospel message. Amen.